Hi, everybody, and welcome back to Miss Angler's biology class. I am Miss Angler, and in today's video, we are going to do a requested topic from my community page where I asked you guys what you wanted to see, and you would like me to walk you through a meiosis test question. Now, for your information, I'm going to be starting up a YouTube membership program, particularly for my grade 12 learners. If you need a helping hand, there'll be a category for you. Or if you are in an emergency and you need as much help as possible, there will also be a category that might interest you as well. Particular details about the membership will go up on my page very shortly, but just know that there are going to be loads more of these kinds of videos in my members only section. So let's get into breaking down what we are looking at here. This is a typical meiosis question from a past paper, and I encourage all of you to try past paper questions before you write any test. And it's important to orientate yourself with the picture before you even start answering the questions. Now, this simple diagram, all it says is that it represents cell division. It doesn't tell you what kind of cell division, it just says cell division. It doesn't even tell you if this is a human or not. The other pieces of information is that they simply say that there is one cell labeled A and that we have four cells with three chromosomes each. Now, this is an important detail. They are telling you that one cell is becoming four. This is very important. It's going to tell us what kind of cell division we're doing, which in this case is meiosis. And this is going to help us answer one of our questions, as you'll see next. So the first question says, name the type of cell division represented in the diagram. Well, the clue for us to answer that is because we have four cells at the end of the cellular division. And the only uh, cellular division that produces four cells at the end is going to be meiosis. Mitosis, on the other hand, produces only two. Now, the second question says, state where in the human body does this type of cellular division take place? And so they're referring to meiosis. Now, hopefully at this point, you have also done some information on the reproductive system because this is a small overlap, but we would say the testes. The next question requires you to do a little bit of maths moving backwards. In other words, we're going to have to work backwards from what we have, and you'll see what I mean now. It says, how many chromosomes were present in cell A? Now, please don't fall into the following trap. Please do not add all four of these cell chromosomes together. That is a common mistake. People assume that they must just go 3, 6, 9, 12. Oh, the answer must be 12. No, it is not. Remember, meiosis is taking the chromosome number and halving it. And so if the first cell, this very first cell here, represents a halved number of the chromosomes that we started with, all you have to do in order to get back to the original amount is you just need to double one of the cells. Do not reference any of the others. It's not necessary. And so that means the answer for this must be six. If we move on to the next question, it says explain. And I want you to know that whenever you see the word explain, you have to give a cause and effect answer. It's for two marks. Always look at the mark allocation. It says explain what the effect will be if crossing over did not take place during the type of cellular division mentioned in 2.1.1. Now, this is important. Many people will just dive straight in and they say, um, there'll be no genetic variation. The problem is this. They are actually asking you to describe the effect of crossing over and then what it will, what it will not produce. And so many of you go straight for the product but you don't actually talk about the process. So in order to get two marks here, you need to say there will be no exchange of genetic material, one mark, and therefore there will be a decrease in variation. Now for the last question, it's a simple application question. It's asking you, in a human karyotype, 
the first 22 pairs of chromosomes are referred to as, and this is actually a terminology question, it should be very straightforward. The reason why sometimes it's met with difficulty is if you don't know your actual terminology, you might be thrown off by the word karyotype and the first 22 pairs. And so if you don't know what a karyotype is, you might struggle to answer this question in the first place. Remember, the first 22 pairs of the chromosomes in a karyotype are your autosomes. These are the chromosomes that are responsible for all the other genes other than your sex determining characteristics. Now I've included the official memo that went with this particular question so that you can see it for yourself and that you can mark your own answers if you had attempted the original question on your own. Now it's important to remember that meiosis at surface value might look like a very straightforward topic, but they often ask quite complicated questions on them. They're often very application heavy, which means they're more difficult. Now, I suggest that you do as many past papers as you possibly can to practice these, and I will be doing lots more of these videos to come, both in preparation for exams and the final mocks, but I will also be putting a lot more of these on my members-only page. So if you're interested, go and have a look at the details that I'm going to be posting shortly. Now, if you like this video and you'd like to see more, give it a thumbs up and comment a suggestion down below of another question you would like me to do to post up on my YouTube videos. And I'll see you all again soon. Bye.